Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sarah Adams. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys what I'm packing in my hospital bag. And I'm actually so excited to do this video um, for a couple reasons. One is Jolie is coming in just a few days. I don't know when I'm gonna get this uploaded. It literally might be like the night before we go into the hospital, but she's due via a scheduled C-section on the 23rd of June. So whatever you're watching this. So we're like getting down to the wire. I'm also excited too because I feel like you're not a pregnant YouTuber if you don't do this video. So for those of you that are just following along my journey, I'm gonna kind of go over the things that I'm packing for Jolie first. Um, if you've watched my previous videos, you know that I love showing you the things I have for her. So I'll show you all of that stuff first. And then for the pregnant people watching this video, I'll go into what I'm packing for myself and for my husband. I'm also gonna be talking a lot about the things I'm not packing. I've done a lot of research. I did have a birth with my son. Obviously he was stillborn. So what I'm packing is a little bit different, but I feel like I've gone through the whole process of having a C-section and everything. So I definitely have my own experience to lean on, but I've watched so many other YouTubers here um, and talked to a lot of my friends about what they sh did pack, what they overpacked, what I shouldn't pack. So I'm gonna kind of throw some of those things in this video too. just about everything that I'm packing minus a few other odds and ends like my laptop and our pillows things that I can't pack until like last minute but it literally all will fit again aside from the pillows into this bag although I may end up just using a roller bag um, like suitcase kind of thing because with COVID right now Clark can't leave the hospital so like once we come in we're not leaving until I'm discharged so um, I didn't want to overpack. I think that was something really important to me. I didn't want to overpack and have too much stuff that we had to lug into the hospital and then lug back out along with the baby. So I feel really good. I definitely have some things that might not be necessary, but I, f I feel like I'm balanced between um, being a little overprepared, but also not overpacking. So again, first of all, I'll show you what we have for our daughter. It kind of brings me to the first thing I'm not bringing, which is a ton of outfits for her. With the C-section, I'll probably be there for about three to four days. I'm not bringing any outfits except for her going home outfit. I know that my hospital really encourages skin to skin the entire time, so she wouldn't need to be dressed. Also, even if they didn't encourage that, that's what I wanted. So I am packing some swaddles for some cute pictures and just to have her swaddled up and warm when we're not doing skin to skin, but I don't even think that that's gonna be that often, so they're more for pictures. So the first thing I'm packing is this precious white swaddle and headband set and I'm absolutely in love with it because if you've watched my stillbirth time with Davin hospital video um, I do share the intimate pictures of me with him and I had a special white swaddle and white cap with a little cross on it for him so my sister got me this she just knew that I wanted some swaddles and I just love this because I feel like it's going to be similar to what Davin wore, but it's her own special thing. These will definitely be like some favorite pictures of mine. So I'm gonna take the tags off, get it washed real quick, and then toss it in my bag. That's what she's gonna look like. I'm so excited. And my sister got this at Walmart. Anything that's on here that I got on Amazon, I'll link up below. Um, I did just do a video about my Amazon registry and everything that I love off of that. So I'll also link that up. This is one of the swaddles that I talk about in that video and that was on my Amazon registry. It's super soft, it feels like a t-shirt, it's very pretty. So again, just another swaddle with a little headband, matching headband. I also got this on Amazon. It's kind of like that iconic hospital hat, but it has the bow on it, of course. That will be the first thing that she wears. And then her going home outfit is also really special to me. Um, it, it was gonna be Davin's going home outfit that obviously he didn't wear. So again, if you're new here, you don't know, we had a terminal pregnancy. We knew that my son probably wouldn't make it. Um, buying a lot of stuff for him made me feel better, so I still bought this. But I bought it in unisex knowing that he might not use it. So I'm glad, super glad that I have it. And for anybody that's ever gone through a loss, like um, I always encourage them, like don't get rid of any of your stuff because it's just things to hold on to from them. And I'm just so glad that I get to reuse this for our daughter. So it's just these cute little um, cotton pants and then a little white jacket. 
And then this is the onesie that came with it. It just has little elephants on it. I like the idea of having layers because I don't know how cold it's going to be in the hospital, going outside, and then getting back in the air-conditioned car. So I think having the layers is going to be perfect. Plus she's going to be a couple weeks early, so I don't know exactly like what her weight is going to be and how much weight she's going to have on her. I'm also bringing two headbands because I'm not completely sure if I want to put the pink on her or the white. Also going back to not knowing her size, this is a newborn onesie, so I'm assuming that that's going to fit her. But I do also have these two other onesies, so again, it's not going to be like something that she's going to be wearing all day in the hospital. But I might just put one on one of her if it fits. This one's a preemie. And this one I featured in my popular video about when I found out that I was pregnant with Jolie and told Clark, and it says, handpicked for earth by my brother in heaven. So I don't know why I ordered in preemie. I think that that was like the only one available at the time. So I'm hoping that I that she's at least small enough I can get it on her for at least a picture. If her going home outfit that came from Davin is too Small for some reason, I hope she's not this big, but I do have a zero to three and it says, hello world. So if she ends up not wearing this, I'll just save it. And then once she grows into it, I'll take some more pictures. I also brought some matching little socks and something that um, was highly recommended for her also was to bring mitts, uh, little baby mitts. So I'm just bringing two pairs of those because their little fresh nails can scratch up their face, especially in those first few days. So I'll probably be putting these on her if I need to. I don't know how soon they recommend um, filing their nails, but I am bringing a baby nail file also. And then just one more extra bow, just in case. So that's like everything that she's gonna be wearing. I'm also not bringing diapers for her or pacifier for her. I know that they have those things in my hospital for her and she probably won't need a pacifier if I'm gonna be trying to get her to stimulate breast milk and everything. I asked my doctor, having a C-section, my milk shouldn't be delayed any more than the average person, which could be anywhere from two to five days. But I just figure I'm not gonna use a pacifier with her if I have all that time to bond with her and do skin on skin. Um, I'll just put her on the boob. So that's literally the only things that I'm bringing for her. Anything else that I need the hospital should have. I'm bringing a couple of things for like memory making slash photos and stuff. So the first thing is this journal that I have for her. I absolutely love it because it's just like this nice looking book. It's not super whimsical looking. Um, so you can put it wherever in your house. But it literally has parts from the beginning of your pregnancy all the way up to 18 years old. So the whole first like small section was all about first trimester and second and third trimester. There was also an area for me to put in um, our family tree. And then the reason I'm taking it to the hospital is because there's a place to put her footprints actually in this book. So I'm going to have them do that. And then this book is also really nice too because like I said, it goes through the whole pregnancy, but then it goes through the first week, the first month, second month, all the way up to a year, and then it goes every single year. So I figure I'm just gonna kind of set an alarm in my phone or something to remind me or just get in the habit that like, on her birthday, I'll pick this up and fill out the, the year, how that year went. And then when she's 18, she'll have this book or I'll get to have it when she leaves and I'm an empty nester, which I can't even think about right now. But I love this book. It comes in a couple of different colors, so I'll link that up. I'm also bringing this inkless hand and footprint kit. A friend gifted this to me. I'm most curious about bringing this because I want to see how well it works. I wish that I had had this with Davin, with him being um, so premature. We didn't get very good hand or feet prints from him. And it's something that I would like to donate to hospitals through my nonprofit for loss, which is called Our Baby's Legacy. So I'm more just taking, taking this to test it out, but plus still I'll get some extra hand and feet prints for her. And with COVID right now, not having anybody at the hospital, it might be nice to gift to some of our loved ones these extra prints that I don't necessarily need, but I think they'll make nice gifts for somebody. And these are like super cheap too. I think they're only a couple of bucks. Okay. And, then, and again, why I don't really need that one is because I have another hand and footprint thing, which is this frame that I've talked about in a couple of my videos now. It has this beautiful wood like rustic frame that should match so many different decors. It definitely matches the nursery here where I'm filming and I'll be able to put her newborn pictures in there. And then this hole right here, they give you this clay kit and in that box it has all of the directions. So I wasn't necessarily going to take this to the hospital with me, but again, not having visitors and stuff, I figure I'll have the time to play around with it. 
And then that way her hands and feet prints are literally like within the first 48 hours of her being born. I'm excited to know that like this frame will forever be in my possession and it will always have her tiny, tiny little newborn hand and feet prints. And then the matching brand of that is my letter board. And I already have it kind of like ready for her. It says, welcome Jolie Danielle Adams. It already has her birth date on it. And then I just have space to put in her weight and her height. I'm not bringing all the letters along, but I'll be bringing all of the numbers so that I can fill in those stats. And then the last two things for that is I'm bringing her little bunny. So again, I talked about this in another video, but real quick, um, Davin, when he was born, the hospital gifted me a Jelly Cat brand, Little Bunny, and I wanted to get Jolie her own one, and when I was searching, I found this one. It's really different. It's a bigger one. It's a different material, but it was actually named Jolie Bunny. It has this cute little dress, so I was like, okay, that's definitely her bunny. So this is her bunny that I'm going to take to the hospital. And then I'm also bringing Davin's bunny. And Davin's bunny is the weighted animal that I hold and cuddle, um, especially when the grief was really fresh. It's actually what inspired my nonprofit and the Heavenly Hugs weighted memorial animals that we make. So this is weighted and it has some of Davin's ashes inside and his heartbeat. If I squeeze it, you'll hear his heartbeat playing. So I just want to bring this to the hospital. I don't know if I'm if I just want it in pictures. I can't imagine I'm going to want to be holding it because I'm going to be holding. Our daughter but it just again it's a memorial animal so it kind of holds that space for him so I'm taking these two and Clark was so sweet he was like he saw these sitting here ready to be packed and he saw the the size difference and he was like oh that's what they would be because Davin would be I mean technically August 2nd will be his second birthday so he would be like a little toddler and then her so that was really cute that he said that. Kind of talking about having the time in the hospital. This is a random item, but I'm bringing this box of thank you cards. I feel like writing thank you cards is like a lost art. Um, a lot of people don't do it, but I am just blown away by how many amazing gifts people have gotten me. So I anticipate that I'll have some downtime since we're not having visitors at the hospital. So I'm going to finish writing out my cards. And I really love this pack. You get 50 of them for like $12 and they're really pretty. And they're not actually baby themed. Um, they just have like flowers and butterflies on them and stuff. So if I have a bunch left over, then I can reuse them for other things. Let me stretch it out. Oh my gosh. Okay, my legs are falling asleep and I need some water. Hold on. So this is the one thing I'm not bringing to the hospital either. I love my big metal water cups and I've heard of other moms recommending bringing them, but I'm not going to again, like the less that I have to carry. I actually really like the big plastic water cups that the hospitals have for you. Kind of what inspired me to start carrying big cups around my house. I've done a very good job staying hydrated this third trimester because I've just kept so, so many of these around the house. There's just always ones floating around. That way I'm just always drinking every time that I see them, but I'm not gonna bother lugging this into the hospital. They'll have one for me. Talking about other things that they would have for me should be pads. I didn't buy any pads until I left the hospital last time. With a C-section, you do still bleed. It's called Logia bleeding. I was recommended Depends from some laboring mothers that did vaginal births. So my friend actually gave me like what was left of her pack. I'm gonna bring two of these to the hospital, although I'm not sure that I'm actually gonna end up using them. When she told me Depends, I was like, are you talking about like Depends, Depends? So just to like be clear, if you are having a vaginal birth, you're not having a C-section, you might wanna bring some of these. Um, I guess that it's nicer than having like your underwear with the pad in them because it's basically like all in one. However, with a C-section, the first day, like I don't even get out of bed until that night and I literally just stand up. I'm catheterized the whole time, which is actually very lovely, I thought. So I definitely won't be using these the first day. And then the second day, I'll start getting up and going to the bathroom. Um, but ugh, I mean, healing from a C-section, I don't think that I wanna have to reach down all the way to my toes to pull these like underwear type things up and down, whereas normally with the pad, I could just pull it out of my underwear. I don't have to pull my underwear all the way up and down. So I probably won't end up using these, but I'm going to bring two just in case by like 
maybe that last day that I'm there, um, I'm able to, again, like reach that bar and I might find that they're more comfortable. So anyways, that's too much info. So packing a few of those, just in case, talking about all the bleeding and stuff, my placenta, I am having it encapsulated, so I have to bring my own cooler bag. So this is getting packed. I'm not gonna get into all of that in this video, but if you're curious about why I wouldn't have my placenta encapsulated, maybe comment and if enough people ask about it, then I'll do a video about it. Um, I also kind of am interested to see like what health benefits I feel from it before I like go into it too much, but it became highly recommended and my doctor was so on board when I told her that I wanted to do that. So that's why I'm bringing a cooler bag. Um, as far as things for me, I'm also not bringing leggings. I'm a legging kind of girl, but with having to wear bulky pads and stuff when I go to leave especially, like I just don't have to put leggings on. And then with the C-section, leggings usually ride pretty high. It wouldn't be on the incision, but I'll have like a bandage there and stuff. So I am bringing a dress to go home in and basically like just tank tops and underwear for the rest of the days and I'm gonna bring one nightgown that has like a breastfeeding top to it if it's cold out for you and you can't wear a dress home I would suggest maybe wearing like baggy your pants like sweatpants or pajama pants something like that and then these underwear so I never wear like normal underwear I wear thongs TMI but um, I had to buy like granny panties for my last c-section and they were pretty ugly they were like a cottony like multi-pack and white and nude and black and they were just nothing very nice so not that they need to be nice I mean hello lots going on in my body doesn't really matter but I did find some cuter ones and I just like these um, because they have more of like a boy short I don't know, you probably can't see in there but there's lace along the edges so that's nice and then there's actually like this band here. I don't know if it's meant to be like tummy control, but um, it definitely goes high enough up over my C-section, but it's not like all the way up to my belly button so that nothing's rubbing on your C-section scar. So I'm packing a couple of those too. And I got black because you want to avoid stains. This I did get on Amazon, came in a multi-pack. I'm bringing flip-flops. That was recommended as something to not forget to go into their shower. It's kind of like a hygiene thing. And then I was going to bring slippers, but I think that I'm not going to because realistically, like I didn't get out of the bed except to go pee from my C-section. So I'll probably bring fuzzy socks instead. Last thing I'm bringing for myself is my pink robe. I've talked about this so many times. I love it so much. I'm not bringing the matching swaddle that goes with this for Jolie. We were going to have the photographer and videographer come in and do the fresh 48, which is like the first 48 hours that they're born. Um, but because of COVID, we can't have people in. So we're going to have it done, um, I guess, like later that week or something once we get home. And we'll do it here in the nursery and I'll wear this there, but I also definitely wanted it for in the hospital. So I'm bringing this robe as well. For Clark clothing wise, he's gonna have to pack his own bag or just, I mean, just throw his stuff in here. I don't know what he wants. It's really not that hard to pack um, when you're going away for a few nights and you're not like going out and doing a lot of things. So I imagine he'll just grab a couple of outfits. Um, I did buy this pack of these amazing men's t-shirts on Amazon. I wanted a fresh white t-shirt for our Fresh 48 photos. So I'm not packing the white one, but this came in a three pack. It came with white, gray, and black. There's like They're like totally logo free and they're super, super soft. Like I'm just shocked how soft they are. So I'll be packing those for him and then whatever else he feels that he needs toiletry wise and clothing wise. That also brings me to some snacks for us both. That was one thing that was highly recommended is bring snacks because again, we can't have people like just dropping off Starbucks and things like that for us. Normally when you're having visitors, people will bring you so much stuff and junk food and candy that like you don't need things. But I put it all in the Ziploc baggie. I feel like that way it's gonna be, everything's gonna be easy to find. We're not big like snack people like chips and things like that but we're big nut people so i have some savory almonds these are salt and vinegar flavored i have some sweet al almonds 
These are actually protein chocolate covered almonds. I have lots of snack bars. The kind bars are my favorite. The, my favorite flavor is the dark chocolate and sea salt. And then this one also is the caramel almond and sea salt. And then I'm bringing some meal bars. So I always use the Isogenics meal bars. This one's the dairy free chocolate peanut butter and Clark loves the lemon passion crunch. I also pack some mints. These are more for Clark than anything, but I also have heard from laboring mothers that it was nice to have mints to suck on. A couple of other um, random things that were on my list is I'm bringing a noise machine. So this is a white noise machine. I talked about this in my third trimester must have video. So it just makes like a whooshing sound. It's great for baby put in their nursery because it mimics the sound of what they're hearing like with your blood flow and everything while they're in the womb. That like cozy place that they've been for the last nine months of their life and then they come out to this world that's totally different. So I'm bringing this but it's actually mostly more for Clark because he's a light sleeper. He's really worried about sleeping there in the hospital. Um, I'm hoping that this will just kind of drown out some of the beeping and hallway noise and other things that are happening. Obviously, he'll wake up when Jolie w wakes up. He'll need to hand her to me um, to breastfeed and stuff. But I'm hoping that this helps him get a little bit more sleep while in the hospital. On that note, they're not packed, but it was highly recommended to bring our own pillows that we're used to sleeping with. And I don't remember loving the pillows at all for my last C-section. So I'll definitely be bringing my main head pillow and I'll be bringing Clark's as well. I am also bringing my breastfeeding pillow. I've heard a mixed reviews as far as needing this or not. Um, but I feel like it's uh, like I got this one because it's more supportive than a boppy pillow or let a rent loan a normal pillow. Some people think that those are fine, but I figured why not start it out right? I'd like to start with that one. More about breastfeeding, I am bringing a nipple shield. I used to think that nipple shields were just for if baby couldn't latch correctly, um, but some other mothers have recommended that um, as your boobs are really sore in the beginning, it's just helpful for if you have a time where baby needs to latch and feed and you're just like so sore that you can throw one of these on. So I'm gonna always have this in my diaper bag, but I'm gonna take it with me. They might have these in the hospital, but it doesn't hurt. It's so tiny, it doesn't hurt to bring that. Also, lanolin nipple cream. I don't actually think that is something that they have in the hospital. So I bought a bunch of these little mini tubes to carry and have like in all of my breastfeeding areas throughout our homes. I'm gonna be taking one of these to the hospital. And then also just a handful of um, breastfeeding pads for if I'm leaking. I don't, again, I don't know how much milk I'm actually going to get while I'm in the hospital. So I don't know that these are going to be necessary, but I think, again, just to have them just in case because they don't take up a lot of room. And that leads me to my last breastfeeding thing, which is my haka. Again, I don't know that I'll be really needing it to catch an abundance of milk, but it being my first time breastfeeding, I don't think that it would hurt to have it there. I know other moms have packed it. And in the beginning, you have that colostrum that's so nourishing for the baby. So to have something to catch, like if she's feeding on one side, I don't want to lose any of it. So if I am able to catch some on the other side, um, with this, then that would be great. That leads me to another thing I'm not bringing is my breast pump. I went back and forth on this for a while. I thought, well, it would be good to bring because then like, um, I can get like extra stimulation when she's not feeding and, um, that might help my milk come in quicker or like more abundant, but I'm not sure if that's even the case for sure. And it's a lot to lug in there. The hospitals do have breast pumps. So if I do decide, or my doctor or the lactation consultant decides that it is worth doing in there, they have it there for me um, and also too like I said I want to do a lot of skin to skin with her so if she ends up just using me as a pacifier and just suckling a lot in, in the beginning that's going to be better stimulation than a breast pump anyways because it's all natural it's her rhythm so this is again just kind of a backup but not bringing the breast pump I think about the last thing to hear that's going to be packed is my toiletries so I have this big bag here and I don't think that I need to spend too much time talking about toiletries because we all kind of have our own things that we use. Um, but I'll talk a little bit about my organization. I have this big bag that kind of holds it all together. And I have three different pouches in here. One for things that I want to keep by my bedside. Okay, it's mostly gum, wisps, which are like disposable on the go toothbrushes. Cause let me tell you, like when you're sitting there all day and you just had like a lunch meal from the cafeteria and um, especially with the C-section, like I don't want to be getting up and going and brushing my teeth every time. Those are going to come in handy. Tweezers, chapstick, floss. So these are the things that I want like right next to me at 
fingers reach. This one is more like things that I want sitting next to the sink. In my experience from my hospital, the bathroom sink is very tiny, so I can't have a lot of stuff sitting out there. But rather than Clark having to like go rummage through my bag to find my toothbrush, I just have my toothbrush, toothpaste, tongue scraper, those things are amazing. I'm bringing in a razor, but I feel like I'm probably gonna shave the day before and I'm definitely not gonna shave while I'm there, so I may as well just take it out. You don't need a razor, okay? And then this is a Norwex body cloth. I really love these things. It doesn't take any soap or anything, you just get it wet. And again, another great thing to kind of like freshen up areas with, or even just washing my face. We don't actually have to stand over a sink and use foaming face wash, because again, with the C-section, um, that's pretty impossible to do. The last bag in here is my makeup. And then just a few things that you don't want to forget. Obviously, like your deodorant, obviously hair comb. There's a couple of other things in here, but dry shampoo is worth mentioning as well. Because again, I'm probably not going to be washing my hair from Tuesday morning, the morning of our C-section. I don't know. Maybe I'll wash it before I leave if I'm there three days. It's not a priority though, let me tell you. And I'm just gonna check the phone. If you're packing a hospital bag, if you're watching this video because you want ideas, I do suggest that you keep a running list of things. I have been adding all of these things to my phone list, just my notes section, so that I don't forget when it came to time to actually packing. And then that way when I started pulling it out and putting it together, I could just check them off of my list. Like I said, I need to get my pillows. Can't do that until that morning. I have to pack my camera and my laptop with my external drive because I imagine I'm gonna be taking lots of photos and videos. Um, on that note, I'm sure that I will post photos the first day. So if we're not friends on Facebook, you can follow me there. It's linked below. Also, I am on Instagram now. So I reinstated my website. It's kind of like a hub for all of my social media so you can kind of find everything. So that's gonna be in the, the description box below. I'm gonna try to record video of the whole first day. I don't know how much I'll actually be able to record of the actual C-section, obviously, like, but um, yeah, I'm gonna try to record some of that for you guys. But if you want like first notice when she's born is make sure that you follow me on my social medias. So that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this video if you're just following along my journey. And if you are a pregnant mom and you're getting ready to pack your hospital bag, let me know in the comments below if any of these things you hadn't thought of that you're glad that I mentioned. As always, leave comments. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and also have that little bell press that's right next to it because that way you will be notified every time I upload a new video and we're, like I said, we're down to the wire. It's happening any moment here, so. Um, so you definitely don't want to miss any of the notifications. Thank you guys for watching, for all of the prayers and the love and the support. It means so much to me. And I'll see you in the next video.